Now that the beatings have finished. <laughs> Go ahead, Cameron. Uh, my next question is for in the boy in the strap down, how does Bruno's mindset about the Nazi and Jew conflict develop? Something that's kind of... I don't think it does. I think it, it does. definitely does. It does. It definitely does. It does. I feel like Bruno... I feel like Bruno is one of the... I don't know. Because I'm pretty sure most... I think Bruno is like... One of the exceptions in the society. Because I'm pretty sure most of the kids... We're gonna think this one dimensionally. Oh, we're our country good, other sucks, but Bruno kind of breaks that second barrier. Like he's trying to reach out uh, outside of the cage, you know, trying to break out the sec this second dimensional thinking. So I think his thoughts about he doesn't think them extremely negatively, but he starts to question it. He's like, okay. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? They're like, oh, they're this bad doing this, or it's bad doing that. It's like, why are they doing this? So maybe his thoughts as a kid, in kid standard, he's definitely turning more third dimensional. Well, it's kind of bad. He dies before he finally realizes Nazi's like true bad intention. It's kind of bad. He does not fully evolve as a character at the end. Mm. Um. Daniel, you said he doesn't. Uh, why do you think he doesn't? I don't think he doesn't ever see the Nazis as bad guys or the Holocaust as a bad thing. Because for one, he doesn't know about the Holocaust. Throughout the entire book, he's questioning, why are you with a striped pajama? He's calling it a striped pajama. He's a kid, so to him, it's a pajama with the same colors and everything. I don't think he sees the Nazis as bad. He just sees separate people in the Nazis as bad. Mm -hmm. So then it's like... It's like instead of saying every adult is bad, you see one specific adult is bad, but you don't think every other adult is evil. So then, one example of who he sees as bad is that person who is in love with his mom, right? Uh, Lieutenant Kotler? Yeah, 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 Kotler. He sees him as bad because like Kotler like, always drops his hair and calls him boy, and then, like he sees that as bad and, and doesn't like that. But he doesn't know that Kotler is like, Nazi, right? I don't think he fully grasps the concept of what a Nazi is. So, and also Hitler, he, instead of calling the Fuhrer, he calls him Fury because he doesn't completely grasp what Hitler really is to him. He doesn't completely understand what Hitler is, what the Nazi is, what Hitler and the Nazis are together. They are an entire group of Germans trying to take over the world. All he knows, there's a war, we are here, and I met this new Jewish boy. And sort of saying he gathered much as information at that restricted area. Yeah, he gets as much information as he is allowed to get in that restricted area, even from his parents. Because even at the end of the book, he doesn't know he's gonna die. Meaning he never knows they were dying to begin with. He just sees uh, smoke coming out of somewhere, and they're like, okay, that, that's just smoke. That's it. But he never really understands, hey, I'm in here now, we're both going to die. He never truly really understands Shmuel is going to die eventually. He just sees, he, Shmuel tells him, everyone here is packed together, there's not enough food. He's like, why? Why did that happen? Because he doesn't fully really grasp what a uh, camp is yeah, that's nice. in that kind of sense. So he's still even till the end of his life confused of what is happening inside Shmuel's camp because he doesn't really know what Shmuel is a Jewish kid in, in a prison for no really good reason he doesn't know what his father is part of the Nazis and he doesn't know what Kohler is part of the Nazis really bad person he just knows these are either bad people good people or my friends that's it do you that's, guys uh, have anything to, uh, do you want to rebut that, or do you... That's why you actually changed my mind. Okay, <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to. Go ahead, Gansu, you're gonna... Uh, well, since you changed my mind, I have like a, a different idea. I think in the first place, he never knew about the Nazi Jew class. Yeah, he never knew he never what a Nazi is, what Jew is. a Jew is. I feel like, in a he sense... He could have. He could have, yeah. But he couldn't evolve fully. I think if he grew up and didn't die, uh, if he continued to grow up, he would have eventually learned it and would have actually had the potential to understand like this is wrong 
and this is right. And to let the rebellion against his father. Yeah. The gummy flowers all over again. How old was he in the book? Eight. Nine. Yeah, yeah, like at such young age, there's only so much information about like a war you can grasp onto. Like, if your parents tell you there's a war, what's a war? It's a fight between countries. Why? And, he, and your he parents, had, your he, parents will give you the most one-sided answer ever because we're the good people, they're the bad people. That's pretty one-sided. If you wanna, if a parent really wants to answer it in the most non-biased way. It's because both countries have different opinions. But I think it's society. black and white. Yeah, because both countries have different opinions on society and how it should and how it should run itself. That's why we are fighting to see whoever whoever gonna win. Great. Does anybody else have anything else? I was immediately. Or they or they striped pajama black and white. No, it's like bluish. Yeah, either bluish or gray. Ah, uh, it was black and white. Too, <laughs> and Nothing is black and white except for pajamas. It, no, it could have no, no, been a great symbolism, like, and, 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 Maybe, out, yeah. and outside is black and white, but yeah. you need to know the people inside the pajamas. That would be something you should add whenever you write your own book, right? That would be a great thing to add. All right, let's rotate to the left and give you a second chance to answer questions. <laughs> 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 It's a, it's a ritual we do. It's a ritual we do. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with. <laughs> For everybody watching online. Born in the Shop Pajamas again. Um, after talking about how he doesn't really truly understand, how do you think. Do you think his parents are gaslighting him? Huh? You what? think his parents are gaslighting him? In order to answer the question, first, what do you mean by gaslighting? What do you mean gaslighting? I think that's a term, right? Yeah, that is the term. Yeah, um, like, gaslighting you is like making him believe one thing when it truly should be like another. In order to facilitate this discussion, let's look up the definition of gaslighting. So my, I think from what I've learned, I learned that from, I learned a word from marriage story. Okay. Um, have you ever seen the movie Gaslighting? Or sorry, Gaslight? No. It's a great Jeff. You would love this movie. You would love this movie. Uh, so they say here, gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation or abuse where a person or group covertly sows seeds of doubt in a targeted individual or group, making them question their own memory, perception, or judgment. So it's technically the entire, the entire lighthouse. Uh, this is a 1944 movie in which uh, American psychological thriller oh. starring Ingrid Bergman, um, basically, uh, after the death of her aunt, this woman is sent to study in Italy. She falls in love with a man, and the man, uh, she hears footsteps in the night, and uh, gas lights, like the light is, uses gas, and it dims without being touched, and she feels like she's going insane, and it turns out like her husband is like, playing tricks on her, make, trying to make her think she's insane. So, um, Daniel, go ahead. What were you going to say in regards to gaslighting, I think? Yeah, uh, so an easier example of gaslighting is like, for example, when like a boyfriend tells, her, tells the girlfriend, the girlfriend is like saying something like, maybe this relationship is weird, why is it still happening, maybe we should break up, and then the boyfriend is like, no, you're just remembering things wrong, this didn't actually happen, like, the girl said, you accuse me, and then the boy is like, no, well, I don't think that's true, like, the boy makes her doubt herself, oh, and then she totally doesn't think. So, how do you think, but gaslighting doesn't always go going insane, just making them think that something is not true. How do you think the parents are gaslighting people? I'm not, I, I didn't think they're can gaslighting him. Can I can rebut to that? Can I rebut to that? Sure. I don't think they're gaslighting him. I'm just, I just think they're trying to make him just live as a kid. Because if he knows all of this killing, all of these brutal things they do, even though they think that's right, I don't think they, I don't think they want their kids to know that. Because their kids, their kids should be like in imagination. Everything should be like happy and stuff. Not everything should be, oh, my parents kill people. And even his mom didn't know his dad was doing those awful stuff. So I don't think that parents was just gaslighting him. 
Okay, his dad might be. His dad may be. His dad might be. Might be gaslighting the entire family. Now, might, know, might be gaslighting him and the entire family, but he doesn't he does, he want to do the right thing. So, he, so I don't think he's. That's the point of gaslighting. Do you think you're doing the right thing? You don't know that you're doing something wrong. Um, no. Not really. I mean, gaslighting also, gaslighting also can mean that you know you're doing the right thing, you just want to manipulate them for your own good. So, I don't think he's gaslighting in that term. His mom and dad, and so not all parents, probably his dad. If he's gaslighting. Okay. Gossip, gossip news, and that's the question. How do you think Bruno would have reacted if he realized his friend was going to die? Oh. Or they're going to die. Oh. Not there. He's his friend. Oh. He's, I'm pretty sure he's trying to break him out. He's not going to go inside to find his father. He's just going to ignore that he does that. You need to get out of here right now. I think he, I think he's going to act more proactive. I think he's going to act more like. Uh, like more uh act of uh, like more actively no aggressively because he likes because it's clear indicating the book that he likes adventure and he goes inside that place that means he is willing to take the risk of getting beaten to death so I'm pretty sure he's trying to take it out okay um yes I think he if he was able to even go there and try to be guy later I think he would. Go in to break him out, free him, dress up like a Nazi, like a like a normal Jewish person, and maybe even disguise Shmuel. But I don't think he has enough power or the capability to do all of that successfully. So it might end up the same way. Oh yeah. Mm. Or maybe, or maybe he can just cut the wire and open the entire thing. Like, You're free. Yeah, but he's not to be kind of It's not easy actually. I. Now for a different book, things fall apart. Mm -hmm. Things fall apart. What do you think Okonko grows emotionally or like at all yeah. as a character? Like, do you think his mindset is still completely the same as when it began? Uh, or do you think he became a little bit happier, a little bit more, a little more? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely a little bit happier. No, I feel. Just, no, no, easy. Ever since Ikamufuna came to the household, he, he helped o Okonko to form like kind of a bond with someone. Even though they even said that stated that Okonko became really fond of Ikamufuna and it was actually very hard for him to kill him. And even after that, though he killed him for pride, though he did it because he felt like he had to, he still felt basically depressed for a few days. I honestly feel like his character arc is just kind of weird to label to this. I think his character arc is kind of weird, similar to seeing Shinji. Because mm -hmm. as soon as he's about to make this emotional evolution, go back. About to make emotional evolution, go back. Like, try to get the relationship with Kinafuna, try to get better. He kills him, goes back. He tried, his, 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 he tried, his son tried to like understand his way and then try to, uh, try, try to keep listening to his stories. He just turns completely because of his abusement, goes back. He's trying to he's trying to start the revolution and take back his place. Didn't work as well, just goes back even down. So I think his entire character arc is just repeat, 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 repeat. It's not a pull. When do you think let's pause there and switch to the left? Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> Finally, I'm going to talk about Great Gatsby, even though they're both are all personally boring. Daisy to Gatsby. Okay. Okay, first question. You think you think meaning Daisy was a curse to Gatsby or a gift? Curse. Why? Because now he's going to you basically all his life looking for this one girl who in the end just ends up giving up on him. But, what, him. but what would happen if he didn't make it? What, if, what would happen if he didn't make the baby? Then he would have lived his life normally. I, he may have not become a successful and rich, and he wouldn't definitely wouldn't have thrown on his parties, and eventually in the end he wouldn't have died. Mm. Okay, Daniel, you. Sadly. Is, is that a curse to me? Is, Daniel? Mm. 
Was it a curse to me, Daisy, or was it a gift to me, Daisy? Maybe, maybe a bit of both. I said, what's my opinion? All of his pain comes from one Daisy. All of his um, pain comes from because Daisy sometimes like rejects him. She's gone for like five years. He's sad. But then he throws all these parties to try and find her at least one time. He can't find her. She leaves at the end. He doesn't know that, but I'm pretty sure he'd be heartbroken after that. And then he realizes she's married. I'm pretty sure internally he was very, very sad. But also a gift, because he would have never been met Nick at all. Because he <laughs> he invited Nick because Nick knew, knew, knew Daisy. So then he asked Nick, can you like make a tea party for me and Daisy, right? Yeah, he would have never met Nick at all. Um, Jordan Baker, I don't know if that was influenced by knowing Daisy at all, but Jordan was friends with Daisy first, and then Jordan knows Gatsby, which then I'm going to look at them, them as friends. And Gatsby would have never been this rich unless he had a, a goal in life to achieve, which is meeting Daisy at least once. He didn't reach that, he did reach that goal at the end, but then completely do what he wished he could he could have done so it was both a curse and a gift at the same time yeah okay so uh that, that i'm not we both my own opinion why why would you be fucking your own opinion yeah, i just thought deeply about what i said i was like oh that's okay all right so that was deep thinking so. it was definitely a blessing it's always worth trying something, even though it might mm -hmm. fail. It's always worth it. And he died not even knowing that Daisy. Mm -hmm. That Daisy yeah. basically backstabbed him. He died like not even knowing. So it was all worth it. And he didn't, he didn't even know if he was going to die. If he knew he was going to die, it would definitely be a failure. But he didn't know he was going to die. He just died basically right there. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, I would like to encourage you your revolt, you know, I just can I can I play devil's advocate and say it's worth trying something even if you know you might fail. Yeah. Um, is it worth fighting an MMA fighter, a UFC fighter? <laughs> is it worth trying to uh, jump across the river behind the school? If there's a good reward for it, yes. If there's no reward, then you're doing fine. Then you're an idiot. What if you know it's not even close to possible? There, if, if it's not even close to possible, but there's still that little but there's chance. There's still a little chance. Yeah, little chance. chance. That's okay. I appreciate your optimism. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that um other question of like who do you think who do you think is a, is, a, is, a, is that bird right? Mockingbird. Gatsby. Gatsby's a mockingbird. I think Gatsby's a mockingbird oh. because throughout the entire book, it's not that he's innocent; it's that he's oblivious very oblivious to many of the things going on in life. When Daisy is married to Tom, Gatsby still has that mindset. I can still get Daisy back. They just need to divorce, I can get her back with a happy life. That's very, very blissful. Can I steal your wife real quick? <laughs> yeah. Let me just steal your yeah, wife real quick. Uh, hey, Daisy, I'm going to just kill your husband real quick, okay? So then, he's a mockingbird because by the end of it, he dies getting a betrayal from his very much like loved one from Daisy for like that he has loved for five years, although he's not seen her. That is dedication. Loving someone for five years, although you've never seen them for that like five years. Okay. Alright, let's move on to the next. Uh, uh, Jack, go ahead. Okay, one question. Last one, nice. Please get from a big gay. Try and handle this with maturity. I know it is a sensitive topic. Okay. Yes, I know, but still. It's, are they gay? Because there's implications. Oh, do you think they're gay? No. Like, there's Professionally, no. Jokingly, oh, yeah. Professionally, <laughs> Let's absolutely. Let's stick to the professional. Yeah, Let's stick to the, the what you can prove and not prove. No. I just think they're good friends. Everything that Jay, that Nick and Gabby would do, I would do with Dale. They're, that because they're just good friends. <laughs> Gatsby asked Nick, Nick, Nick for, for a tea party. Nick actually made a tea party for them, right? I would do that with Dale. I, I asked Dale, he do it. And um, Gatsby and Nick... Just to be clear, who's Dale? One of my friends outside of school. Alright, okay. Yeah. My replacement. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, 
Nick and Gabby talk together, right? They they discuss about different topics. Sometimes they sometimes have like parties with each other. Me and they will do that as well. Easily. That's just because they're really good friends. Not because they're gay, just okay. because they're really good friends. Um Okay, uh, what about the movie Great Gatsby? Alright. That is oh, no, that, that sound for right. half time. Thank you very much for Sorry. participating in the first SCI annual Capstone book discussion. Yeah! Oh, my God. This is what I have to deal with. <laughs>